In our literacy last week, we were looking at different types of adverbials which help our writing to flow better. I wonder if anybody remembers what the, the actual correct word is that describes the flow of your writing so it reads really well. Well, that word is cohesion and it's there on the screen. And this is what we're learning at the moment in our learning unit on balanced arguments. It's using devices to build cohesion to make our writing flow. And last week, we looked at different types of adverbial. So we're going to move that on and look at other ways that we can make our writing flow. Just to get us started into this. Here are three different uh, ways, and they're all ways that you've used in your writing before. So we've got adverbs, adjectives, and relative pronouns. I wonder if you can say what those three word classes actually are. Just pause this video and have a think and decide what each one of those are and think of some examples. Okay. Adverbs. Of course, we spent a lot of time doing adverbs last week. And adverbs are when you describe an action, when somebody's actually doing something. An adjective describes a noun. It describes what an object looks like. And a relative pronoun, well, a pronoun is something used instead of a noun. So we might say he, she, it, they, something like that. So in this particular text, I've got to highlight examples of those three types of features. And I'm going to read through this text very carefully. And that is important that I read through it carefully so I can identify them. And I can identify them as I'm going along. So I'm going to read this through and then I want you to pause this video and I want you to highlight all the relative pronouns. All the adjectives and all the adverbs. Martha grabbed her large bucket and fluorescent pink spade. Her mother, who had taken the day off work, was finally taking Martha to the beach. Excitedly, they gathered everything they needed and jumped enthusiastically into the car. Martha carefully rolled down her window and let the pleasant breeze warm her face. The sky, which was cloudless, seemed wider and bluer than before. OK, so have another look at that passage. And I want you to, um, you could write down on a sheet of paper um, some of the adverbs that you find in there, adjectives and relative pronouns. Pause the video and do that now, please. OK, let's see what you have come up with. OK, I wonder if you've got the ones that match my screen here. I did say that an adverb is something which describes how somebody does something, they, how they carry out an action. They describe a verb. So um, finally, they did something right at the end. At last, they did it. So that's an adverb excitedly does describe how they do something, enthusiastically describes how they do something, carefully as well, um, and ever on the end. Adjectives, they describe things. Well, there we've got a large bucket, we've got a fluorescent pink spade, we've got a pleasant breeze, the sky, which was cloudless, and wider and bluer. Okay, um, adjectives don't have to come in front of the noun. We don't have to have large bucket, fluorescent pink spade. The adjective may come after the noun. The sky, which was cloudless, it's still describing the sky. And then we've got the relative pronouns. OK, so we know what a pronoun is, but the relative pronoun is a mixture of a pronoun and a relative clause. OK, so we've got comma who, comma which. OK, so we're not using their names. We're using who, we're using which. OK, and words like that. 
Right, that's got us in the mood for this now. Let's have a look at some examples. And these are the kinds of things you'll be looking at on the sheets that I put on Seesaw for you today. Now, I've got to read through this again very carefully. Reading comprehension skills. The rain, which had been pouring since seven o'clock this morning, showed no sign of stopping. If the weather forecast was correct, for once, there will be no sunshine until lunchtime tomorrow. Toby had run out of things to do. Toby had been trapped in the house all day. Toby had already played with his toys, coloured pictures and watched telly. Mum had refused to let him make slime, so there was literally nothing left to do. He flopped down in his favourite chair and sighed deeply. Suddenly an idea came to him. There was one part of the house which he hadn't explored yet. He jumped to his feet and raced up the stairs. He slid to a halt in front of a door at the end of the landing. The small white door with the shiny handle stood between him and the loft. So I've read my passage very carefully. My question is, true or false? Paragraph one uses a relative clause and parenthesis. Well, I need to remember what a relative clause is. I know that relative clauses from my previous work that I've done are comma who, comma which, comma where, comma when, comma that sentences. And parenthesis, which I've mentioned before, is when something is put in brackets or dashes. Paragraph one. That's what I'm looking at on this question. Is it true or is it false? Let me have a look at paragraph one again because I want to be absolutely sure I get this correct. The rain, which had been pouring since seven o'clock this morning, showed no sign of stopping. If the weather forecast was correct, for once, there will be no sunshine until lunchtime tomorrow. Is there a relative clause in there? Well, if I look here, I can see a comma which sentence. That's a relative clause. Do I see parenthesis? Well, I can see a set of brackets here. So I'm going to say that that is true. Paragraph one does use a relative clause and parenthesis. Let's have a look. It is true. OK. Let's have a look at the next one. It's the same passage. In which paragraph could a proper noun be replaced with the word he? Hmm, so I'm looking for a paragraph where the name of something is used too much. And it says he, so it's not an object, it's got to be the person. Well, I know this passage is about Toby, um, not our Toby, but a different Toby. And I need a passage where the word Toby is used too much and we could change it with a with an e, with a with a he. Um Toby's not mentioned in the first paragraph. Um I'm looking at the second paragraph here, and perhaps you are too. Toby had run out of things to do. Toby had been trapped in the house all day. Toby had already played with... Mm, got three sentences there, all starting with Toby, and I think it's a bit too much. Um, so I think it is this paragraph here. I think it's paragraph two. And I hope you agree with me on that. Let's have a look. It is paragraph two. We could change these. We need, we need Toby's name right at the beginning because this is the first time we meet him. Toby had run out of things to do. He had been trapped in the house all day. He had already played with his toys. OK, so that would be much better. Let's have a look at the next question. Same passage again. Which paragraph could start with the adverbial phrase before long? Hmm. Well, it's pouring down with rain. Toby's run out of things to do. Then he gets his idea. I wonder what you think would be a good paragraph to start with before long. Well, I'm thinking this one here, the second paragraph. I wonder if you agree with that. Um, it's been raining all morning. Toby runs out of things to do. So we could say before long. Another way of saying that is eventually Toby's run out of things to do. I wonder if you agree. Let's have a look. 
it is paragraph two. Before long, Toby had run out of things to do. Okay. And the next one, underline the expanded noun phrase in paragraph three. Right, we're going straight down to paragraph three. Let's have a look at it. Suddenly an idea came to him. There was one part of the house which he hadn't explored yet. He jumped to his feet and raced up the stairs. He slid to a halt in front of a door at the end of the landing. This small white door with the shiny handle stood between him and the loft. Well, we know that expanded noun phrases give us extra detail um, about a noun. There may be some adjectives on there, but it describes a noun. I wonder if you can spot which noun, which object, which thing we are given some description about. And if I look very carefully, I can see here, this is why it's important to read these very, very carefully so you don't miss them. This small white door with the shiny handle. Well, there we've got some information about the door. We know it's small, we know it's white, and we know it's got a shiny handle. So I'm going to say that this is the expanded noun phrase. And I'm sure you agree with me on that one. And there it is. That is the correct expanded noun phrase. So I've just modelled for you there um, how to identify cohesive devices in a piece of writing. So on Seesaw, I have put for you a selection of challenges. Do the sheet which is appropriate to you for the one that you normally do in class um, and read them very, very carefully. And you have got to identify these cohesive devices.